The fact that so many people are talking about coding now is a, in some sense, it's a fashion. And it's not really new. We've been talking about it for, for decades before. We used to call it programming. Now coding has become the, the fashionable term, uh, meaning the same thing. Um, it has just been recognized now in many places that computer science education is, is very important. It has been neglected. And, and a lot of people start talking about it now. Um, whether you call it coding or programming makes little difference. But there is actually very rich history of um, programming education and computer science education. Um, so one half of the answer is um, coding isn't new, just you know the, the term calling it coding instead of programming has, has become. And the other half of the question is of course that computer science is a lot more than just coding or programming. Um, but there is a good reason to um, focus on the coding um, to get the public message across even though we want to teach much broader, we want to teach computer science and not just programming. Programming is the active, visible bit, the, the one where you can actually you know, do something visible, something concrete and try something out. So looking at programming as you know, the entry point into computer science is quite a reasonable thing to do. That is where, where it becomes creative, where it becomes fun. And so um, drawing people into computer science education by talking about programming or coding um, is, is a thing that, that works very well because it's a very exciting, satisfying activity and by starting to get into it by being active and by actually doing something and building systems is an excellent way to, to be motivated. And so I think that is why sort of coding has become the buzzword to, to actually say, if you were to spell it out, you know, we need more computer science education. <laughs> If you, if you want to sort of replicate the success that we have had in the UK in bringing computer science into the curriculum, um, I think the most important thing for us, the, the, the lesson that we've learned, the, or for me and many of us, the most important lesson is you cannot come from the top and impose it. You, know, you can't have just government coming in and saying, oh, thou shalt teach computer science. Um, that, you know can work at some superficial level, but it is fraught with problems and, and it's almost certain to fail. The one thing that has made it work so well in the UK is that it was a genuine, real grassroots movement. And that it started with people in the classroom, few people without any organization, without any, any diktat from, from above saying, but there were people there who were genuinely excited and motivated to change things. And there were a lot of people volunteering their time um, and uh, for example running hubs, local hubs where you know, people meet and just discuss locally about computer science teaching. Um, these grassroots movement, you know, lots of little activities around the country, that is what makes it work. Uh, and that is, I think, what made all the difference um, in the UK about it being, having succeeded or, or had, having had the possibility to fail. Um, now, the question that usually gets asked is, you know, how can we achieve this in our country? That's a very, very difficult question to answer. You know, the, um, the simple answer is, you know, have a grassroots movement. Um, how you make that happen is, is very, very hard to give a formula for having. You need people who are passionate about it, who are um, willing to donate their time, and you need to create an infrastructure that allows them to flourish where you don't try to do things centrally, where you just create an infrastructure and a culture and a, a, a relationships where people can come in and contribute. In most societies, there are those people who want to really just make a difference and who will volunteer their time. Uh, trust in people. You know, um, is, you know, involve as many people as you can and, and start things in the classroom rather than starting things from an organizational point of view. Um, it is difficult. Um, I don't think there is a single formula that you can just follow, but, but keeping that in mind. And the second thing you need is patience. You know, we, uh, we, it didn't happen overnight. CAS was founded about seven years ago, so it's taken us seven years to get here. You know? so, and that's the other problem, of course, with politicians. If you tell them something where the effect of their action is seven years away, when they're, they're already out of office again, they're often not interested. You know? So you, that's why it doesn't work with politicians. You, know? so you, you have to be patient. You have to create a movement that takes many people with you.
Yeah, the EU can certainly help with this. I don't think the EU as a structure or as a formal organization can make it happen, but they can certainly create the environment in which it can happen. You know, the EU has an important role to play in, in supporting, you know, in enabling uh, this to happen. And so there's, you know, it's often it's a question of money. You know, we, for example, one of the biggest problems we're facing in the UK at the moment is teacher training. You know, we, we have sort of overcome the hurdle of getting into the curriculum, but we still need a lot of teachers. For, that needs money, you know, it needs commitment. So the EU can help at that level. They can put a framework in place, they can put funding in place, they can put guidelines in place, they, can, they cannot make it happen themselves. They need support, you know, from, um, from the classroom, but they can certainly create the environment in which it can happen. Yes, so I think for anyone working sort of on, on this topic and, and trying to get coding into the classroom, the message is just, you know, two things. Keep going locally on your level, you know, keep working and try to make it replicate, you know, to have other people, you know, don't, don't just think it's, it's just you who has to do everything, you know, have a, create an environment where other people can join you and, and do the same thing, where it can grow and spread by not having one large organization where you suddenly uh, you know, do something over the whole country, but where you have lots of little people where you share your expertise that there can be more people like you who go around and do things in their own uh, local area. I think that's the way to grow it. That's the way how you... Uh,